In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to finish our series looking at some of the techniques that are used in the introductory clip to the American television show NCIS. What we'd like to do in this tutorial is look at how they bring the credits for the actors and actresses on the screen in that particular intro. We're going to show you kind of a mock-up of how it looks and you'll note that when the name comes in, it comes in near the bottom and spreads apart slightly under a flare that moves from right to left. Those are the techniques we're going to look at in this particular tutorial. So look at the mock-up here and then we're going to show you how to do that with the tools you have in CyberLink PowerDirector. First thing I want to do is go to my title room. I can click on the T and then I'm going to click my default title and drag it down to my timeline marker in track number two. I can double click on it or press the F2 key to get into the edit mode. Now I'm in my title designer. I'll change it to a fictitious character. And then we're going to change the a little bit about the font. We're going to reduce it to about maybe a 26. I'll change the font family to make it easier to see. And then I'm going to relocate it near the bottom. I can center it by using the pink line as my indicator that I'm centered. Or if I don't like that, I can click on the box at the bottom, right below the preview screen, and say horizontal center. And now it's centered. Now I do have an effect that gives me somewhat of what I'm looking for, but not exactly. Let me show you. If I click on the effect tab on the left side and choose ending effect, the one I want is near the bottom. They're alphabetical. It's called Unite. And you notice when I use Unite, the letters move apart and fade, but they go all the way to the end of the screen. That's not quite what I want. But I'm going to start with that, and then I'm going to trick it. So if I hover over the last part, that is my ending effect that says Unite. I'm going to shorten the starting effect to almost nothing. And then I'm going to lengthen the ending effect, get as long as it can. And I want it to move about to here. Now I'm going to keyframe. So with the timeline marker at this location, I'm going to click on the arrow the triangle pointing to the right by the letter 1 for the track. And I'm going to set an opacity keyframe. Then I'm going to back up just a little bit. I can widen it to see my frames individually here. And I'll set another opacity keyframe. Now right now the opacity of both of them is 100%. But what I'd like to do is fade this one out. I want it to fade it out before the letters get to the edge of the screen. And so I move with the right arrow to my last keyframe. Then I click on the, the, the object area. Here's my opacity. And I'm going to dial it back to zero. And so what will happen will be it will seem as though it ended there. Even though it's active and spreading out, I won't see it because my opacity happens to be zero. So if I play this, it moves a ways and then fades out. Just what I'm looking for. Now we'll click on OK. So the second thing I want to work on is I want to work on, on my flare. Now, I don't have one exactly like what they were using in the clip, but I have something close to it. If I click in my PIP room, I have one called Lens Flare number 6. I'm going to take and drag that down and put it right below my title track, and then I'll change the duration to match. Now, we have to do some interesting things with this Lens Flare. What I'm going to do first of all is change the way it looks on the screen. So I'm going to double click on it. That gets me into my PIP Designer. I'm going to make the screen smaller and I'm going to turn off 
maintain aspect ratio. I want it to be fatter and more prominent. And I think that's about the way it will cover the letters. The other thing I want to do is keyframe it. So I'm going to set a position keyframe as I go right to the beginning by moving my playhead to the left and clicking on the diamond. And then we're going to go in about a second or so, maybe even less than that, set another keyframe. I'm looking at my XY positions here. I'm 0, 0.92 and 1.208. I'm going to drag it to the left off the screen. And then I'm going to change this to 1.208 so it's horizontal. And now it should start on the screen and move to the left. So if we move our playhead back and play both of these, You see it starts out virtually on top of the letters. I really need to reposition it down and to the right a bit. But if you look at the frame by frame of the actual TV show, you can see some of the letters when it starts. But it happens so fast your eyes don't notice the glitch there. So I'll play this again. And we have something close to what we saw in the NCIS presentation. So that's a way in which you can use these two tools and actually be modifying a little bit one of your effects in order to create something like what the NCIS folks use to introduce their stars in their show.